Hey, what's going on guys? That dude Siraj. Peace, how you hanging? Uh, back for another episode of Range Talk. Uh, as you can see down in the description, down there somewhere, we are looking at the Taurus 856 38 Special Revolver. Um, comes in this box here. Oh, there we go. Of course, comes with the gun lock. Comes with your manual. Use your manual, read your manual before you go shooting. Um, sometimes there's a little tidbit of information that could come in handy. If you've never shot your gun or never aren't familiar with that model, there's going to be some information in there that you are better suited to actually know and uh, read up on. So I always suggest that. Of course, we have the firearm itself, which came in this bag. So, I mean, it's already been out and used. Um, and then, of course, a little lead hazardous warning. And that's pretty much it for the box. Nothing, nothing too special there. So, the revolver. It's a six-shot revolver. Uh, this is not the ultralight model. So, this is going to be the standard 856. It is going to be heavier. I like that it's heavier. Um, right now, what I'm shooting out of this guy is the 125 grain cowboy actions. Um, they're a light recoiling round, and because I use this in my classroom uh, with new students, a lot of times new shooters, I want something that's going to have some light recoil so they can get acclimated to, uh, you know, uh, shooting a 38 special, shooting a, uh, a revolver, and this is a good start. It's not like shooting a 22, uh, of course, but it's not going to be a full-on, um, you know, the, the hotter loads of 38 special and definitely not a 357 which you cannot shoot can not shoot 357 out of this revolver okay so this is made in brazil um again six shot cylinders so you can see four here and then there's uh two more one gonna be lined up with the barrel one gonna be six o'clock from the barrel uh it came out of the box pretty well lubed not overly lubed um the cylinder spins free the plunger for, to extract the, the shells um, operated very, very smoothly. Yep, can we focus on that just a little bit for me, camera? It's kind of become a cloudy day. Sorry, I tried to get out here earlier today and it was too darn hot. This has some great feel. You see the little Taurus logo. You see on the back strap here, it has a lot of nice serrations. Uh, well, not even serrations. It's kind of like three-dimensional uh, serrations going this way, but then it has like these rows of, of etched in rubber, which is really nice. Of course, you have your, your stippling here, and then you have these little ledges here on each side, which for me, and again, I don't have big hands, but, you know, I got kind of long fingers, and I can comfortably get all three of those fingers my pinky my ring and my middle uh, onto this handle and let me kind of see here this little lip here my my middle finger fits right up against that and I feel it it really supports um, so yeah this handle much better than the 442 I think you guys remember uh, me reviewing that I would take this over the 442 any day uh, because of comfort now, reliability, uh, long-term, uh, after long-term use, we'll, of course, we'll have to see how that holds up. But, you know, I don't expect this revolver to give me any problems. I mean, it's, it came out of the box seemingly very well made, has good weight to it. Again, this is not the ultralight version. If you get any of the colored versions where they have, like, the reds or the blues, I think there's, like, an orange, um, those are ultralight models. The regular, heavier model only comes in black i believe there might be a stainless version don't quote me on that so you know just something to consider i wanted the heavy model because again i'm using this with my students in the classroom and on the range and this absorbs recoil very well is very comfortable to shoot uh, so for those purposes i would 100 percent recommend this uh if this had to be your you know your gun on your on your nightstand don't leave guns on nightstands if you got kids especially um you know i think this would be a good one to go to go with now and of course you do have an exposed hammer so this can be shot in single action again you move that hammer back that takes up all of that trigger slack and it's a very nice crisp break and then of course you can use it in 
double action mode, okay? The trigger pull is good, and the trigger size is good. It's, it's not too wide, it's not too narrow, and I feel like even if I shoot one hand, I don't feel like I need to adjust my grip. It just, it, it, it fits because of the handle, and I feel like it's a good natural pointer, and just the size of it, again, it fits for me. Everybody's a little different. You have to, of course, go ahead and shoot it based on your hands. It may feel a little bit different. This one, I feel like it has enough meat to get a good grip on, to get my finger in the trigger. That uh, that trigger well, um, trigger guard is, is, is pretty sizable. I got enough room to get it in and out. Uh, yeah, it's, it works. And again, the cylinder release on the other side, maybe I didn't point that out uh it's 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 a good size it's in a good place and the way that they cut it i feel like you don't slip off of it you get on it you push it and it does what it needs to do so all right i think that's enough of that i think we should go ahead and get shooting what do you think yeah let's do some shooting all right so throwing on my howard leaked impact sports going to be a video coming in soon about these uh it's going to be comparing them to a couple other models that i have and uh okay so we're gonna go ahead and load these up i got these little cases these uh mtn i think it's mtn mtn case guards which I now, whenever I come out to the range, I get a couple of these filled. One, so I don't shoot more than I can budget at that particular time. And, uh, you know, again, they're, they're pretty well made. So if they're clunking around in the bag, I haven't felt that I need to worry about them uh, opening up or anything like that. So I got some for the 38 Special. I got some for the 9mm. Uh, I think I'm going to try to see if I can find one for the uh, 22 okay. so again this is six shots I got a basic little target there and then what are we 12 by 12 we're gonna see how accurate we can get here and oh hold on gotta throw my eyes in I knew something was off get that spider scent starts tingling <clears throat> Okay, so we got single action. Let's see what we can do here. Can y'all see the gun? I don't think y'all can see the gun. Let me step back a little bit here. All right, y'all can kind of see the recoil. Oh, that one was low. I think I jerked that trigger. Let's come back. I feel like I jerked that one a little bit too. I think that was the last one. Was that the last one? That was the last one. All right. Got a little squirrely there. Not terrible. Well, most of these fell out without actually having to hit the extractor. Let's load another six in here. No, I don't shoot this one that often. I don't have too many rounds out here, so actually, you know what? Let's just go five. Let's take one of these out here. Now, here's one thing to, uh, to note, right? Can't really turn this around with the angle that we're facing. I can't point it at the camera, though. Now, I got one cylinder open. A lot of folks who want to carry a revolver will a lot of times keep that top cylinder open that it's on because what happens is when you begin to squeeze the trigger the cylinder moves okay so as that cylinder is moving and is going to the next round the next round is the one that's going to go off but if you were to drop the pistol 
and somehow that firing pin was to ride up uh, and sometime, some, somehow hit where that primer would be, there isn't a round there. So to safely, safely carry a revolver, a six cylinder revolver, uh, or six shot revolver, you would really only load five bullets into it. So, <clears throat> mosquitoes. So just something I was reading up on, figured I would mention it. I'm not the type to really carry revolver. I like my semi-autos uh, because even if even if I'm shooting a single stack that holds six or seven shots, it's a lot more compact. Uh, Cross sectionally, is is you know it's not going to take up as much space. So and I like you know the holsters better for <laughs> for what's available for my MMP shield. So I'm I'm going to stick with that personally. Now you may be different. I don't know about rocking this as a boot gun. It's a little bit heavy. Maybe you want, you know, might want to go for like an ultralight or a thinner five-shot revolver. But uh, you know, tease their own. Whatever works for you, it's cool with me. All right, let's go for another. <clears throat> I'm shooting just a little bit to the left. I got some. Uh, Definitely a little bit of muzzle rocking. Yeah, this all right. We're kind of in the <clears throat> minute of man area. I got a target down there, uh, 25 yards away. Yep. Yeah, one of these guys. He didn't bulge. No, just got a little stuck. But plunger got them all out. <clears throat> How are we looking there? Not too bad. Definitely off to the right, but I feel like it's, it's shooting for the most part center. Uh, I had a couple that I pulled. And when I say center from top to bottom, uh, definitely I'm shooting just a little bit right uh, of, that, of that vertical center line. So let's try. Where are we at? Uh, so that was just about five yards, uh, a little bit more than five yards. Let's see what we can do on the uh, on the 15 yarder, and we're gonna shoot a little bit faster this time. We're gonna see because uh, that's a that's a man silhouette target. So let's see uh, what a quick. I don't have anything to draw from, but we'll just come from a low ready and engage the target and see um, see if I can stay within minute of man. Let's see what we got. We're not gonna do single action. We're gonna do all double action. Can't guarantee I'm a hit. Right in that black, but hopefully we should be able to keep it uh keep it within minute of man. Oh, much longer trigger. Get your hands. All right. I should probably stop shooting in a single action so much. And for giggles, I'm going to take two more in single action. And I'm actually going to aim this time <clears throat> using the sights. All right. I see some holes down there in the black. Not too bad. I can't tell what the other ones are, but I can definitely see two, uh, two air holes right there. Where am I at? I'm actually more than 15 yards. That's huh? 15. I'm about 17 yards, actually. Ah, I think those hit black. I see more air holes. Air holes, light holes, whatever you want to call them. They're holes. Okay. And everybody jumped on me last time when I, when I spun it in. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to treat this one very nicely. All right, there you go. All right, let's go down there and take a look. All right. We're doing the walk. Haven't done the walk in some time. All right, so all in all, we shot, how many rounds we shot? Um, how many rounds did we shoot? Six, seven, eight, we shot eight rounds. Okay. Uh, let's look this way. So we have, put my finger at one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we're off paper, we're off paper, we're off paper. Where are the other ones at? 
Ah, might have shot right underneath his crotch. Uh, that would be seven. And I think, I think this one right here is eight. Uh, that one right there. I think that's eight. I dropped two of them. Probably those ones that I that I screwed up with the long trigger pull. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. One in the shoulder. And I'm pretty sure the last two that I was aiming landed in this area. So we'll subtract two. I'll, I'll have to take a look at the video to to fully see. But I'm just I'm just gonna say we subtract two. So we got three in the red zone, one in the shoulder. Then a couple of them off, so. Eh, you know. Y'all be the judge. I'm not going to rate All right. myself. Alright, so. Down to my last six shots. Okay. Whoop. One. I already got two, three. There's four. There's five. <laughs> I think this is sick. Probably should look at what I'm doing, right? Alright. We're going to do this from 25 yards. Actually, I'm going I'm to extra yard. This is going to be 26 just so I can stay in the camera here. I'm going to go single shot, strong hand, right hand, uh, right side, and see if we can stay within minute of man. The other camera should be down there running. I'm going to go uh, hand in the pocket here. I think that's six, right? Should get a click. Yep. All right. Go, cool, cool. Always get that one. There we go. All right. All right. I don't have a. Uh, I don't have the best feeling about these groups here, but this is why y'all like me, right? Because I'm so freaking honest. All right. Whoa, whoa. Oh, only we, oh, no black. All right, so apparently I need to not shoot with one hand. And of course, my goofball self did not bring more ammo to compare a two-handed grip versus my one-handed. Oh, I got one there, and I got one in the head. So, by theory, this guy would be down. But, got another one there, another one there. I think I need to check how I have my sights aligned, because I have the... The top, the, the front sight just above the dovetail in the back. I'm not sure how the heck that one went so low and these went so high. And I don't even see. That's three. That's four. I don't know where five and six went, to be honest with you. Wait. One, nope. Hold on. Sorry. I'll take that back. One, two, three, four. There's five down yonder. I don't know where six is. All right, so that sucks. There you go, it's a real life shooting, guys. One-handed at about 26 yards. I got lucky with a headshot. Might have took out a kidney. The rest of these whizzed by his head and one probably went off the page. But I'm noticing it is still mostly left to center. One, two, three. Those are, those are left of center. So I'm gonna work some more with that. I don't shoot this one a whole lot. Yeah, I'm just going to make a bunch of excuses and uh, have to reshoot this at a later time. Just to prove to myself that uh, I can get more proficient one-handed at 26 yards, yards with a uh, 1.5 inch revolver or 2 inch revolver. I got to see what that's listed as actually. I like this gun. I do. I'm not a revolver guy, but I like this gun. Um, so far, I haven't had habit, habit, habit. So, so far, I have not had any misfires with it. Um, it's gone bang every single time. Well, do I recommend this gun? Yes. If you're looking for a 38 special, something that is somewhat light, carryable, 
but not ultra light where you're going to be breaking your wrist on every shot. I think this is a good compromise. Um, do I think it's quality made? I would have to say it's for the price range. Now, mind you, I got this for less than $300. It was about $279. I got it for less than that because I got a great gun dealer um, that really works with me. So well, there you have it. Um, another episode of Range Talk. I don't even know what number this is. My apologies, but I'm sure you saw it listed at the bottom in the beginning. Um, so the Taurus, A56, six-shot revolver, um, made in Brazil. I like it. For all intent and purposes and price points and functionality, um, and the purpose that I'm using it for, it, uh, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. So you guys check it out. It might be something that, hey, if you're, you know, looking in the lower uh, echelon of dollars and cents may work for you. Um, I will co-sign on that one and, you know, hey, go check it out. So not that I have an extensive rapport with a lot of different revolvers, but the ones that I have shot, I could say that one definitely um, checks off for me. So questions and comments, definitely hit me up, uh, throw them in the comments. I'll try to get to you and uh, respond with as much information as I can possibly have. If you're in the Richmond area or a little bit north of the DMV or a little bit south and want to come up to Richmond for one of my classes, definitely check out my offerings, www.tdstrainingnow.com. That's www.tdstrainingnow.com. All right, that's all I got, man. It's hot out here, but um, with that sun behind the clouds, it's actually gotten a little bit nicer, but we're a little bit late in the evening. So you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend or into your week. Whenever you see this, be safe, happy shooting. That dude's garage. Peace.